Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to a very special episode of the show. We've got not one, but two all-stars of extreme metal in the house today, as long, along with three all-stars from the Hudson Valley Squares. So let's welcome Mr. Chris Reifert from Autopsy is here. The legend is here. Hello. 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 We got another <laughs> legend in the house. John McEntee from Incantation is here. Hell yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And the local Hudson Valley legends. We got Count Ralphus is in the house. Brian Scow is in the house. And Nick Franco is here. And I am P. Pardo. Welcome, everybody, to a night of death metal discussion. So, uh, first of all, Chris, very happy that you reached out to me on email. We're very happy to, to get you on the channel fairly quickly after all that happened. And uh, yeah, welcome to this little thing we call Sea of Tranquility here. John, I dig it, man. Here before. John can tell you this is a fun place to be. So, Hell yeah. yeah, I know. Great to be back. Yeah. It's been a while, John, cool. right? When was the last time we had you on? Has it been a year? <laughs> yeah, it's been a, at least a year, if not a year and a half or something. A while. Yeah, because I think the last I'm time not we were on, love. you were just finishing I'm up the album and anymore. then you went out on tour. And that was, and that that's... Yeah, I've been busy. I've been busy as fuck, yeah. John's always touring. He's a maniac. <laughs> <laughs> and he is. I, John, I asked yeah. you a while ago how many times you toured. And you're like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't even I don't even have a clue how yeah, many no. times. <laughs> yeah, you're a machine. It's got to be documented somewhere. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, I mean, I th there's some documentation, but there's not like a full one the whole time. I've seen some stuff online, but there were there were holes in it too. So, but um, yeah, I I should have made a better diary of all the tours, but I didn't know I was going to be doing so much touring my whole life. I thought it was just going to be like a couple of years of touring, and then you know say screw it or whatever but before you know it 30 years passed <laughs> so you know you're an unstoppable force that's true oh you're a frozen unstoppable force <laughs> <laughs> there he's back all right you make a good statue john now we know <laughs> put you in uh, Prague next to the frank zappa statue there <laughs> So, Chris, uh, Autopsy has awesome. been basically back in the news again. Uh, you guys released the new album, Ashes, Organs, Blood, and Crips, with your latest album. Yeah. Pretty well received by fans and critics, I would say, right? And Ralph's got a copy right there. I mean, oh, yeah, nice. it's been around since 1987. Uh, yeah. How does it feel to have Autopsy still be riding high in the death metal world after all this time? I mean, it's been a long time. It must feel good for you guys to be back again and relevant again, you know? Yeah, it's cool. I mean, I don't know. We don't really look back too much. We're just kind of like, oh, what do we got to do next? What what am I going to have for lunch? How am I going to get the next practice? You know, that's kind of how my brain works. But a good album, so, yes, and, and it sits well in your discography, I think. And uh, and that's, you know, a good reason to keep on going, right? As long as the fans like it, the critics like it, you can go out and play live and people accept it. Were you able, uh, like, how much are you integrating uh, songs from the new album in the, in the set list when you guys play live? Uh, we haven't done any yet. We played uh, a couple of shows since the album came out. Or, or did we? Yeah, maybe one or two, but we we, we didn't have our shit together enough to uh, mix anything in. So we're hoping we're playing uh, Texas in uh, March and we're hoping to throw a song or two in there. I mean, we probably should, you know, so it looks like we're not just, you know, riding on the past or something like that. But uh, yeah, I, th I think we'll throw at least the, you know how it is, John um so uh yeah we'll throw a song or two in there i'm sure but yeah we're stoked that people still like what we're doing and we're having fun jamming with each other and stuff still we still talk to each other and all that stuff that's a good thing yeah it's cool chris that's the uh, else heroes fest you're playing right in march yeah yeah uh -huh. awesome i'll be at that i'm looking forward that's a good fest too i think i don't know if you've ever been to it before but it's no full run promoters great i think you guys have a good time that's what everyone's been telling me. I'm just tripping on the lineup. I'm like half those bands are bands that I loved as a teenager discovering metal. And now we get to like play with them. So that's pretty cool. I'm I'm super, I'm super hyped about it. Yeah. I think you guys are going to fit in nice too. It's, they always do a great job, good lineups. And yeah, I was good. I was happy to see you guys. Cause it's been like, it'll be two years since I last saw you guys at Maryland death fest, uh, 2022 with, uh, Nick. So I'm looking. Forward. Oh, nice. Cool. Well, come up and say hi when we're, uh, when we're there. Absolutely, man. I will. Yeah, I heard you guys talking about uh, Baltimore before we uh, uh, <laughs> got going here. 
Oh yeah, yeah. I was I was saying to Nick, I I don't I don't know if you could see it from where you were uh playing drums, but during <laughs> no. your set, uh you you probably know about it when the uh Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was happening right in front of me and Nick. Like, that's something I've never seen in a gig before. Uh, <laughs> I said, well, first, we we didn't know anything happened until after we played. And then a friend of ours called us up or uh, called my wife. It's like, you never guess what happened. It was crazy. And then we saw pictures. And then I got home and, and Danny, being the expert sleuth that he is, he found like super up close video footage, like <laughs> super up close. So there was there was no detail lost. So yeah, fun times for the family. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. You guys, uh, any other uh, any other shows lined up after that, or is that kind of it right at the moment? No, no, we've got uh, we've got that. We've got we're playing this fest called Obscene Extreme in the Czech Republic. That's, That's right. in July. Along. We're doing a, a a decibel show, decibel magazine in uh, Philly in August. We're working on a San Francisco show. We're trying to line up an LA show, and then we're talking about maybe something else. So it's kind of like little bits and pieces are hopefully falling into place. Isn't it wild to see, like, as long as you both have been in the game, it, like genres and what you were into was so like like rigidly defined. I feel like now with the festival uh, atmosphere of metal, like you could you could have so many different types of bands at a fest, and I think there's just not as much people don't care you know there there's i went to uh the vagos metal fest in portugal in 2019 and they had um necrophobic and ginger and like all these and they just threw them all together and you know everybody just has a good time but i i think the festival uh culture has has kind of revived extreme metal as far as the live scene would you say i love it man i, I love yeah. i love seeing not just death metal bands playing because you know, yeah. I play I play death metal, but I can I can only listen to so much of it. <laughs> You're like, okay, there's another another one of these guys, you know. So uh, I like I like the ones uh, where they have like like Hell's Heroes. There's very little death metal, you know. It's like which I was kind of surprised they reached out to us. I'm like, you know, we're not an '80s heavy metal band, right? You know, but so there was extra cool, you know, like uh, you know, we got fucking Watchtower and Omen and. A, a staggering amount of bands I, I like that mix with like the extreme stuff i think that's cool because like the like straight up heavy metal is is what i that's kind of like my teenage years probably like you know probably like you guys too or, or you for sure john um yeah. before there was death metal you know so i, I like <laughs> i like uh, i like to mix this stuff I, I have a short attention span for like death metal band after death metal band so i think it's cool getting a good variety of stuff in there it's great yeah, I agree a hundred percent. It's definitely awesome when you do, you know, play even just shows for us, tours or fests that have a mixed bill. I just think it makes it more interesting. Who wants to hear, you know, the same kind of stuff over and over again all day long at a fest? It's, it makes it, you know, it's it makes it more interesting. And, you know, especially for me, like Chris was saying, when they have like old school bands that we grew up on or something, we get to get to play with and see makes whatever you know going to the fest a blast yeah it makes it as a fan of music it's so cool I'm like oh my god i get to watch you know fucking sodom or Candlemas or whatever i mean how cool is that yes you know, exactly yeah fantastic love it and chris speaking of um when you know b being a fan and before death metal existed and you know this icon of death metal that you are um you know, when you played on, you know, like Scream Bloody Gore and things like that, like many people say uh, that moment was when death metal was born. Um, at the time, did you have any inkling? Were you trying to push for something or you just were you were just like, we're just going to play what we want and you weren't even thinking about it? Or did you have any idea that you were onto something that were really you pregnant hadn't... at the time with death metal <laughs> <laughs> that hadn't been done before? You know, no, I, I remember we were just excited that we were making a record. That was pretty much it. We're like, oh my God, we're making an album. This is cool. That was it. it wasn't like, oh, how's this gonna affect the future? There was none of that, you know, like you know, on, on screen, you know, like I was 17 and Chuck was 19. Like when you guys were that age, how much of the future did you think about? Yeah. Probably not too much. Mm -hmm. I mean, zero for me. <laughs> Absolute zero. So we were I'm just happy like, to do oh. an album. Yeah, we just got we got dumped off in in downtown LA 
unsupervised, you know, uh, entrusted to make a record. And so we did. That, it was that simple. We just did, it was just a matter of like, let's not fuck this up, you know, mm -hmm. basically. But thoughts for the how, future. How old were you when this came out? How old were you when this when you did this demo? Step seventeen. Yeah. How, how long were you in? How long? How long were you with Chuck for? It seems like it wasn't too long. I mean, like from beginning to end. Yeah. Not that long. I mean, like I joined in probably. I want to say March because I had just turned 17. I was a little nervous about that. I was like, oh, he's going to think I'm too young and tell me to go fuck myself. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I thought he was some older man of the world or something like that. And he was like, not only two years older than me. So it was not an issue. But um, the whole thing went by super fast. Like we recorded Scream in uh, November of 86. And then things kind of dried up. And then we just were like hoping to play a gig or do something like that and then like he was sort of like not sure where he wanted to be and then he ended up going back to Florida to stay and so I mean my, my time in the band was probably like on paper a year a year and a half tops something yeah, like, yeah maybe a year and a year and a half and until the day came when it was understood that the chapter had closed on on my portion of the story yeah, well, I, got, I got a quick question on that. Yeah. Um, I I read this book. Um, it's uh, Death by Metal: The History of Chuck. I don't know if you ever seen this book, but in this book, no. it it talked about how um, Steve DiGiorgio was was practicing the songs and was hoping to be on the album, but uh, then Chuck ended up playing all the bass parts, and I I I thought I can't believe how much of a better album. It, it would have been Scream Bloody Gore if DiGiorgio was on there because uh, on on the, the autopsy, having him on this album, it makes it my favorite autopsy album. I love the oh, really heavy bass on. Oh, um, yeah. Um, as far as my recollection goes, I don't I don't remember a discussion about Steve playing on the record. If, if that's something that him and Chuck talked about, I wasn't a part of that discussion. Um, but I know for a fact that after we recorded the album, we had designs on playing a show, at least in the Bay Area. And we even uh, practiced with Steve and he learned the whole album. I remember that very well because we were all three sitting in, in a room and I watched Chuck show him in the songs and he learned he learns them like like that. Like he's like, OK, here's Infernal Death. Got it. Here's Zombie Ritual. Got it. You know, like yes. all 10 or 12 songs. I mean, he learned he learned like the whole album in like an hour, you know, probably. I don't know if that's a slight exaggeration or not. But then we're like, OK, cool. We're ready. We got enough of a live band together to play a show. And then Chuck decided to move back to Florida and that kind of like popped that balloon, you know. But if there was a discussion about Steve playing on the, the album, I wasn't a part of it. So I don't I don't know. I might just be it, ignorant about that. But that's it, you know, I didn't hear about anything that so much later. It says right in this book, it says. And um, Steve asked, okay, who played the bass? And Chuck replied, I had to do it. And I said, I was supposed to play on it, dude. I rehearsed the songs <laughs> with you guys for weeks. Chuck then pat Ryford on the back and, and exclaimed, I told you we should have asked him. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, <laughs> that's that's kind of news to me. Or maybe there's a hole in my memory. That's possible. Yeah, it is quite a long like, time ago. Yeah. yeah, it was like 1986. I don't, I mean, <laughs> I, I could be missing something. I could have a, a serious <laughs> hole in my brain. I'm sure there's more than one hole in my brain. So, you know, I, I don't remember everything. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's it's possible. Well, one other question about that time. I know a lot of those songs are already written before you're in, but what songs were on there that you actually, like, wrote from scratch? Was there anything? Um, I didn't write any of them. I just learned them. Um, actually, I can, I've got it sitting right here. Ah. Let's see. The songs that did not exist before I joined the band was Zombie Ritual, Denial of Life, Sacrificial, which was supposed to be called Sacrificial Cunt, but the label wouldn't print that. Um, I think he already had Mutilation and had a, a version of that with the, his San Francisco lineup. Uh, what else have we got? Torn to Pieces. Scream. Uh, 
Scream Bloody Gore. Scream was newer. Yeah, I, I remember when I when I met him the first time, he um, played me Scream Bloody Gore on guitar. He just written it. He was like, hey, I got this new song. Want to hear it? I'm like, yeah, of course. And so he he played me the song just on guitar. And I'm like, oh, that's fucking sick. So, but other than that, it was like a bunch of demo songs, which was great because I, I loved the demos. I'd already collected them and they were already emblazed in my brain. So I didn't have to like learn them. You know, it's yeah. like, okay, let's play Infernal Death or let's play Evil Dead or whatever. Let's go. All right, cool. I didn't have to say, how does that one go? Like, I listened to them like, you know, a hundred times already. So it was like, no big deal. I was just stoked. Like, like, I get to play these? Oh, that's great. Let's do it. <laughs> yes. My turn. <laughs> Chris, I got kind of a follow-up question on that. So yeah. one of the things I always, I always loved about your band the most is I know it's always been you, Eric, and Danny, like pretty much since day one. But uh, you've had different bass players throughout the years. But yeah, every autopsy album, like you put, you make a big emphasis on bass. Like the bass is always loud in the mix. It sounds fucking nasty. Uh, I know, like the first four albums, you had different guys, but the bass always stood out. Like, uh, and that's one of my favorite things about you guys, because to me, a lot of death metal, I just wish like the bass. You know, I like I love Lemmy, I love Blackie, I love Martinine. You know, fucking Geezer Butler. Like that's my, you know, Steve Harris, of course. I love. Yeah. I wish death metal had more of that. So like. Who are some like I don't know like who are some of your like favorite bass players? I always I figure like for you guys it's a big part of the band like it really factors in prominently. So you know, who's some of your favorite bass players? You know, growing up and like what kind of influenced you to make like you know what bass is going to be like a big part of our sound because that's one of my favorite things about metal is like just like that nasty like lemmy blacky bass which you guys to me have always had. I just think bass is just like is e equally as important as guitars or drums or vocals i mean why would you have a bass player if you can't hear them you know, i mean you know like sure it looks cool on stage but you gotta hear that, you gotta hear that shit you know it's i, I just i'm kind of like no bass no heavy you know um yeah i don't know I, I i mean bass i'm just trying to think of favorites like growing up and stuff like geezer of course is one steve harris and dennis dunaway from alice cooper um you know, I could go on and on and on, but uh, yeah, man. I mean, if you don't have a heavy bass in there, no guitar is going to make it heavy enough. It's just not going to do the trick. Hell yeah. No, I, I, you know, the, the guitar will bottom out before you get that, that true bass sound. So you gotta, it's important. You gotta have it. Yeah, I agree. Like listening to like seven survival and mental funeral, like the bass always <laughs> stood out to me. It's one of my favorite parts of that album, you know, it doesn't just follow awesome. the guitar. It's like, you know, it's got like a mind of its own, which I always loved. Yeah. No. Oh, thanks, man. I, I think a lot of that too was was uh John Marshall who engineered that album. We didn't I don't remember a lot about that session, but I don't think we had to tell him very much. He kind of just like did it, you know. He'd already worked with Sadis, so he knew, you know, like Steve DiGiorgio's bass. So mm -hmm. they they'd already worked before. Oh, cool. And um he'd done uh the Hex EP. Um, quest for sanity which we thought was really cool and you could hear the bass really good on that and john at the time was in metal church and he'd like substituted for uh james hatfield when he got you know when he got burned you know john was the guy that like played live mm -hmm. um in in place of him so he you know was like neck deep in metal yeah, he's he a metal dude he's a metal dude yeah yeah exactly <laughs> so he uh i i don't remember saying hey can you turn that bass down put it that way <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's true though a lot of a lot of times actually in the studio though they do push you to try to turn down the bass in the mix a lot of times which i think is kind of lame you know because it is important i think a lot of bands don't utilize their bass player enough you know yeah it's almost like a, a you have a some bands seem like they have a bass player just because it's the thing to do yeah it know? looks good in the band picture <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think some of these, some of these newer, like uh, technical death metal bands, it's like the bass player is almost playing as like a lead instrument, right, along with the guitars, and you miss that bottom end. I think that's what I like so much about both of your bands is there's that big crushing bottom end, and how you guys incorporate these almost like doomy passages in between all the rest of the mm -hmm. insanity. And some of the newer bands, they kind of miss out on that. I think a little bit. Oh well, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, we. I don't know. Yeah. I just think bass is just up there with guitars and drums and vocals. It's all, you know, you got to have it all. Yeah, I, I think we're just more influenced by the, the doomier metal type stuff like Black Sabbath, the Trouble, Candle Mass stuff where the bass like oh, yeah. is the bass, you know, it's not, you know, 
weren't as much influenced by yeah like the i don't know more like the anthrax sound where it's really like ding, 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 you know or like a really high endy bass I, like i know i never understood that with the bass and even the kick drums like sounding super high endy i just think that that's you know to me it doesn't sound right like that i mean the bass and the kick drum needs to be like a bass instrument it's supposed to be carrying that low end and um punch to it not not just a high end punch but like a, a good thump to it or i'm trying to say you know a thump instead of a click yes yeah because I, yeah. I remember especially in the late 90s i was hearing a lot of bands really going clicky on those kick drums especially and that was always a real bummer for me because i just didn't think I just to me, it just isn't the way it should be. I know it's precise, but I think it loses the essence of the instrument a little bit. I agree. Like yeah. you can hear it's the kick drum, but it like it, it adds nothing to me. You know, it's like it like, should like, feel it, not just hear it. Yeah, it's on like a cardboard box. You know, it doesn't add any like it doesn't punch in the chest. Yes. Yeah, it's like a you typewriter know, sound or something. In this yeah, age of AI, I think like we want things too, to so. we want it to sound human, not like a machine, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, yeah, yes. exactly. I mean, there's there's people that do want that click sound, and there's a, a market for that, and that's cool. But you know, like, it you should feel it, and not just hear it. I think. Yeah, it's a matter of preference. That's true. Exactly. Yeah, something for everyone out there. You know, there's no wrong way to do it. It's just do what you like. You know, this is what we like. And Chris, I loved, you know, in the 90s and late, late 90s, 2000s, you're doing Abscess, the bass sound on those. I mean, that music reminds me of like Disrupt meets Napalm Death meets some like death metal like you do all together. And at a time when metal was people, all kinds of trends and all kinds of things were going on. You, I think you've always probably had a pretty clear idea of how you wanted your music to sound, right? Oh, man, Abscess is... <laughs> that was cr crazy times. <laughs> oh, yeah. John, it's just really good. It's really stood up. John I, see me throw up and then go on stage right after throwing up with abscess. That was a, that was a, well, I think each member drank a bottle of Jim Bean before the show. And I can't remember if it was you or Danny, but like somebody had to like look for you guys to find out where you guys passed out before the show to play. Oh, that was me. I was <laughs> our, Clint's, our guitar player, Clint's girlfriend had like half, escort slash support me to get me to the stage and i have a cassette recording of that show it was fucking terrible but you guys are switching instruments too yeah i got through the whole show though but i couldn't <laughs> we we couldn't do that band again we would definitely die <laughs> there's, there's no way <laughs> it's a good, good reason not to that's good it was a, it was a 15 year blackout basically wow <laughs> it, it was fun but yeah I, at the show if i remember correctly it was just at a certain point they just started switching instruments um i don't remember who was doing what because it was a insane night but i i just yeah it was kind of a common thing where you guys would just say like okay this song we're just gonna switch up the you know who's playing what or something well we do this thing that was when we had uh uh freeways our drummer who was the you remember freeway because he yes. on the u.s or he was our, our bass player but yes. he was a, a drum a drummer immortal something mortal fate right he's from yeah yeah so we the last two songs of the set he would um what the hell he would play drums and danny would play bass and i would just do vocals and just like be obnoxious and break shit and we we got banned from like every club we played for the first two years because of that and it was a lot of fun <laughs> <laughs> it was we were assholes let's be honest <laughs> i remember seeing the cover to was urine junkies and oh yeah when i was a kid like in the relapse the catalog or whatever and yeah and i remember being like what the fuck? <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> no apologies than that is no. this album cover <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> this this shit fun album it seems like abscess was a continuation of that like oh they like they thought that album was dirty let's let's give them this for nine albums yeah yeah kind of i mean i don't know we just we're having a lot of fun with it you know it's not to be taken seriously but if if it made you upset it just made us laugh you know <laughs> it made me take a second shower today after listening to it today i had to take a second shower oh, oh man yeah I, 
on the rare on the rare occasion when I listen to it, which I don't much, but if I do, I feel horrible when it's over. And I'm like, oh, that's a great album, but man, I need to take my brain out and take some steel wool to it and then put it back. You know, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. It's like, oh shit, I created that. Yeah, I guess I did, right? Yeah, yeah. It was. We were in a strange mindset, but we were having, you know, we we were, we knew the band was breaking up, but we. We, we're seeing it through and we just didn't give a give a shit we were just having a lot of fun and it was actually a good time well i think that's one of the most important things at autopsy it seems like you guys always having a good time when doing albums or playing shows and you do it in a really fun way in your own way which i think is really awesome that it comes across it's like serious but it's also fun at the same time like you're not taking yourself too serious or anything you know oh we don't, we don't take our our selves as human beings serious but we take our music very seriously like we we rehearse like crazy we show up in the studio knowing what we're doing we try to play shows without making too many mistakes i mean it's going to happen anyways because it's live the worst thing is when you're playing a show and you have that moment where you go "Uh uh-oh what what part's next (laughs) that happened to me in atlanta we were playing one of the songs and i like was thinking about something else and I'm like oh shit i have no idea what part is coming up next what do i do and so it's just like the train completely went off the track for a minute and then the, the guys are good about getting it back on so we 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 carried on but uh but yeah i mean it's if you're in a band you should be doing it because it turns you on not because i mean if you're playing music because you want to be the most grim band on the planet or you know the most serious or terrifying band that's cool but ultimately you got to admit you're getting a kick out of it you know <laughs> whether you want that's yeah, pretty tell fun anyone, whether, you, whether you want to tell anyone in, in public about that or not you, you got to be in the practice room going fuck this is fucking cool you know <laughs> i could totally see you getting lost because you must have been involved in like a thousand songs when i started really researching for this episode i was like fuck man there's like a, a thousand fucking things he's done all the side project bands and everything, and each band having so many albums. I discovered the Siege of Power today. I didn't even know that that oh. existed. You're working with the guy from Asphyx. So that's another thing I got to buy now. I, I, I got this Static Abyss album. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, that's now I realized yeah. there's another one that came out last year. And this the Ravenous, this is a super group, should have been huge. Oh, Killjoy. Danny Lilker. Yeah. I think you and Danny Lilker are in like a uh, a competition to see who can play in more bands or something. <laughs> uh, there's there's people that play uh, in more bands than us out there for sure. <laughs> but I don't know. I, I think I'm a, a restless musical soul. You know, I just like to do stuff. And someday I'm going to be too old and decrepit to do it anymore. And then I could look back and be like, oh, that was fun. That was fun. That was fun. That was cool. That was kind of fucked up. It was really fun. You know, <laughs> stuff like that. So. Yeah, you gotta, write a book. you gotta write a book then when you do that because uh we gotta have all this like documented because it's it's impossible to keep up with all this stuff that's out here. I mean, this is my stack of just uh autopsy CDs, you know. Oh nice, then, yeah. I, I may or not may may or may not have been working on uh some sort of lit- literary adventure, as a matter of fact. Oh good. Good. He, yeah. oh, he brought up the static abyss, which I think is a really killer. Um killer band i just um i don't think a lot of people know about it it's crazy because i've you know since you hooked me up with a copy of that stuff i was like i was totally blown away by it but um i think it just needs to get out there a little more you know because that that's really really good stuff i really really like that a lot i mean i like the new autopsy too but that static abyss is also something to me very special oh and thanks i think it's too is great Oh man, Violation. thanks and all these things. <laughs> yeah, some some of this is is too weird for for a lot of people, and that's okay. You know, that's totally fine. Chris, first off, I'm only 41, so the first time I saw you guys was I think Maryland Death Fest 2010, so 2010 or 11, I forget. But uh, I remember you had Danny uh, playing bass with you at that show. Was there any talk of like ever him like playing in a more I, I figured it was just like a you know temporary thing but was there a talk of like getting him in the band like on a more permanent basis going forward or I think he was probably still doing brutal truth at that point uh oh he he was doing all doing all his things no we just um well we were it's kind of complicated because we're we're still doing see if I can even remember this straight in my head we were still doing abscess at the time 
when we decided to reform autopsy and I think we knew, oh God, I'm going to mess the story up. I'm not even going to try and tell the story, but no, uh, Danny was just there to, to help us out. Oh, cool. And, um, you know, we, we had him signed on for three shows and then Joe, who was the bass player in abscess was going to cross over into autopsy and, uh, and, and, uh, be like the full-time guy. But there was this sort of like transitional thing where we knew Joe was going to be the bass player, but we had Danny fill in. It was kind of weird and complicated, but it actually all ended up working out pretty good. But that would have been 2010. That was the, the outdoor one, right? Yeah, yeah, that was the outdoor one over by, uh, fuck, I can't remember the name of the venue now. Uh, Nick, what was the other venue we used to be at? Uh, was it Sonar? Sonar, yeah. It was well, Sonar, Sonar, yeah. Yeah, that was a super fun show. That was our first uh, show back after, you know, 15 years. Was that the first actual show? Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. First, the first one of chapter two. Oh, yeah, because you guys fucking killed it. I mean, to me, the first time, you know, last time you guys had played, I was probably, I don't know, pretty young. But uh, yeah, you guys were fucking awesome at that show. Left a big impression on me. Oh, oh thank what, you, man. What was Pres the last show you guys with, played? With Autopsy. The last show? Yeah. I mean, uh, the last one, the first time around. Uh, That would have been at... um. Uh, a club that used to be called rock on Broadway in San Francisco. Um, and they, they changed the name to the ruthless Inn, and that would have been it. I think I'm pretty sure Sadis played at that show. And um, I, I forget who else I have a flyer for it someplace, but that was, that was the last one that was 90, ugh, 94, or 95. I can't recall. Yeah. That was, that was the last that was the first show where we actually got a hometown crowd <laughs> that was the last we even one put, the we last even one. Put, yeah we even put on the flyer like hey it's our last show you know now or never uh, you know before that it'd be like 10 of our buddies all hammered like oh you know and that was like when you tell people it's the last chance all of a sudden they show up and there was like a line out the door down the street you know that was that was cool we're like finally but you know at least it happened <laughs> Yeah, good way to end it at least. Yeah, yeah. So we ended on a cool note, I guess. Chris, have you played in like, have you played in all the countries that you've wanted to play in in your life, or like, what's you guys have done probably everything, right? Like, you've been to. I Japan. mean, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of places we haven't played. Um, I would really like to play Japan someday, mm -hmm. but we haven't had a chance. We haven't been uh, formally invited or anything like that but we i mean we've played a, a lot of a lot of cool places otherwise i mean there's we certainly haven't played everywhere but nice. you know we've we've, we've hit a, a pretty fair amount of, of, of spots nice that's cool chris uh yeah. ralph was kind of hinting earlier on you know about your vast catalog but kind of looking back in your career do you have an album like one album that you're most proud of of all the albums you've done mm -hmm. uh i mean i don't know i i I try and feel that way about every new album we do. Like when people go, what's your favorite one? I'd say it should always be the newest because if you, if you make a new album and you're like, yeah, this one's good, but the last one was better. <laughs> then, you're in trouble. then you're in trouble, you know, and then you're like backpedaling. But if I had to like, just say one without thinking about it, I'd probably say Severed Survival just because that was the first album by like our band, like, like Scream Bloody, score was killer but it was it was a band that i joined nice. as where the first autopsy that was like our band that we formed our ourselves and we got a deal and blew half the money on pot but still <laughs> recorded the album <laughs> it's funny because it's true um but uh but that was like i still remember getting the package of our our personal copies in the mail i was like checking the p.o box every day every day every day and one day i'm like I know they're going to be here today. I could just feel it. And I went and I checked it and they were there. And I felt like a little kid that, you know, Santa had just visited like, Oh, it happened. So that was kind of like a special thing, you know, if I had to pick one. Yeah. So feel good for the both yeah. of you guys, like all, like all these years later to think that like severed survival onward to Galgotha is like held in such high esteem with albums like seven churches and legion and effigy the forgotten and scream bloody gore and altars of madness that's pretty cool right when you look back on it that that the people honor. who are into this style of music look at those albums as absolute classics of the genre it's fucking super cool man yeah. i can't i can't believe that people 
still want to hear that stuff. <laughs> you know, it's kind yeah, of crazy. I, I, you feel the same way. You know, you think about it. You're like, man, that stuff did it so long ago, and people still still give a crap about it. It's super awesome. You know, it's mind blowing, really. Because you just think when you're doing it, you're just doing it. You know, just wanting to do your own thing, do an album. You're excited to do it, and then you know, at the time it went over good, but say over time it ends up turning like you know quote unquote legendary or something you know i feel weird saying it's saying that because it's our, our own stuff but somehow it meant something you know for us i mean it meant something for us at the time but we didn't know it was going to connect with people i'm sure it was the same way with chris i mean you don't really think about like we're going to create this great album or something you just do the best album you can the best stuff or stuff you're vibing on at the time you know what i trip out on is the fact that 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 death metal has been around so long and it doesn't sound like old people music because <laughs> like you know if it was, but yeah because if you're like you know in the 80s yes and you heard music from the 50s which wasn't that long ago before it you're like damn that music is fucking old you know <laughs> and now it's like you know it's the 2024 now and you can hear something from like 93 or whatever and it still sounds fresh and and cool and not like oh that's my dad's music i can't like that that's really you interesting know? yeah yeah i never I thought of that but... yeah i i really trip out on that you know it's like wow it's kind of like whether i was in a band or not or whatever just like the music itself as a, a a format has kind of achieved this level of of timelessness you know and i could just say that as a fan listening to you know incantation or immolation or insert cool band here you know, it still sounds fresh and cool and not like, you know, like I said, like someone's dad's music. Like, I can't listen to that. I never I don't think death that. metal could ever sound old like that. I think because death metal still scares people young and old. Right. And you can't. Oh, good. Is old, <laughs> right? <laughs> I would hope so. I mean, it's that's kind of the point, you know. Yeah. Or, or, yeah well, I mean, think about doing it then, you know. I mean, I know I thought that the music only had a longevity max, like five years and something else would come by, you know, and never thought, what, 30, 35 years later, people would still be into it even. I just thought there would be just a progression that was like so different because what I think what we were doing was kind of was a pretty extreme um, version of metal, you know, and the fact that it didn't go somewhere else, you know, I mean, it, okay, it went somewhere else in certain ways, but it's still relevant so, you know, so long from when it originally happened. Just to me, it's just mind-blowing that um, it is because at the time, yeah, I just thought, okay, you know, five years max and no one's going to give a crap about this crazy stuff we're doing, you know? You had more foresight than me, John, because I didn't think about anything. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think about anything at all. You started thinking about where to get the next joint. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. That's it's funny because it's true. <laughs> While I was gathering stuff together for this episode, um, like the original old death demo and the old uh critical mass autopsy demo, but I was there in the beginning, me and John are around the same age, and uh, you know, um I had the early seven inches that incantation put out, but uh on these, on these episodes we do the best of of the year at the end of the year. And the last two years, both these albums got in my top five. Oh, nice! And both in and both incantations got in my top five for the last two years, and this is shit that I've been listening to for all these decades now. Oh, cool! So you guys are saying how weird it is, but like, we're I'm still like totally into these over anything else that's coming out. You know, that's that's not weird at all, man. I still like. <laughs> All my old like Kiss and Alice Cooper records, my old Aerosmith and Cheap Trick records, I still feel the same way when I listen to them now as when I was, you know, a kid in the seventies or whatever. Of just like I get all excited, like oh, it's just still get that same it's feeling. A testament to our veteran bands, right? Because you know we talk a lot about how Overkill and Testament and you know. Tigers of Pantang and Judas Priest and all these older bands, Saxon, who are still putting out really good new music. And both yeah. of you guys and your bands are doing the exact same thing. I think that's it's great that the old veterans just refuse to go away and still have that creative spark to go out and make new music that's thrilling us, the fans, right? It's important. Man, just, 
just last year, the, I had such the list of uh, new releases that came out from bands that I, I grew up with. Like you mentioned Overkill, that was one, you know, and like Saxon and, uh, you know, like yeah, I could go through my stuff and, and compile a list. But I, I found myself towards the end of the year going, oh, my God, it's 2023 and all my old favorites like are that. still making... Yeah. Kill, or even like the 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 yes the album um uh the latest yes album that came out you know which you reviewed you know yeah. i love that too um just like on and on and on it was so cool like my number one album it. last year was the new uriah heap album man they, they've been around for since 1970 and they're still killing it yeah. So, oh yeah yeah, yeah, I know. It's great. yeah i think yeah, we're, in a, we're in a bit of a golden era right now in the sense that like I kind of, I mean, it's hard to put a finger on when, but you know, when Bruce came back to Maiden and things like we got up, you know, grunge wound itself out and, you know, you knew you were going to have these ultra popular, like Creed Nickelback up there, but like, okay, fine. That's the popular, but I think the underground, all of a sudden we found ourselves where, okay, the trends kind of played themselves out. Everybody kind of came back home. And now you have this thing where the old forefathers were still playing and a lot of you said still are. And then like the, the step down with like the 50, the 50 year olds will say <laughs> are still, yeah. you guys are basically, I mean, you're still in your primes and we're in this area where we have the old guard is still playing. The middle guard will call you are still, are still, you know, killing it, you know? And I think that we're, we're in a, a nice era right now. We tend to, we all tend to pine for all the old days and that was great in its own way. But like you said, a lot of you guys probably didn't, there was no deliberateness. You didn't know what you were doing. You didn't know that, you know, the mental funeral was going to be what it was and all that stuff and Golgotha. But um, it, it it turned into something. And now I think we have the, the benefit of looking back and saying, well, this is what worked. And one of the, to get back to what you were saying, we were saying in the beginning about production. Um, I think one of the reasons why you can turn on an album that you guys made in 1987 or 1991 and it still sounds as immediate and amazing is the production it works the the some of the ultra modern stuff just it doesn't there's an atmosphere when you put on you know uh fucking when in the grip of winter starts you're 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 in something you're not just listening to a song and oh uh, that's cool that's great to hear you know what i mean i'm babbling here but you know whatever. no no i feel the same way when i hear yeah, records like not Oh, nice. I had a coffee before this, too. I feel the same way when I listen to the records that I like, too. I just it takes you to another place, you know, like because even if I wasn't in a band, I would always be a huge music fan. I have all my life, you know, so I, I still get excited by new things I hear, old things I hear, old favorites, stuff in the middle. Like I'm a, I'm a music fucking nut, you know, it's, it is. I don't think it'll ever change. It is impressive, though. There's lots of new I mean, older bands putting out new material, that's, you know, some of the best of their career. You know, it's really it's really an awesome time to be around because you have the, you know, the classic stuff from, you know, back when we were younger. But then, you know, like when Autopsy puts out a new album, you know, so to say, it's like I always know it's going to be killer and it's going to be Autopsy. It's going to be what I want. It, it might not be rebuilding the machine, but it's going to be what. I want to listen to when I, when I listen to a band and a lot of bands, it's like, they kind of maybe at the age that we're at and, and, or whatnot, we kind of know our lane and we stick to our lane and do our lane the best we can to try to express ourselves in that lane. And so instead of maybe in the beginning, you're almost like trying to just, you know, put it all together and just try to figure out where you're at. I think at a certain time, you just kind of, I guess you just know yourself. At least that's the way I look at it for myself. It's like, you know, we created great stuff early on, but I didn't I know how the hell we got there. But somehow now I kind of <laughs> understand how to get there. Like just from doing it like enough times, you know, for 30 years, you start to get a hang of it. Like, oh, OK, this makes sense or whatever, you know. So, yeah. Yeah. One one would hope anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> but, but a lot of times, too, the best things happen by accident, to be honest, too. Yeah. I yeah. The originality yeah. back then was a big thing. It's like. It, there was only so many bands doing it so everybody was different everybody sang a little different everything was one band was a little faster one was more doomy one was super uh crazy lyrics or whatever but then it got to a point where there's a million bands doing the same thing so i like to follow the bands that i've been following for years and years the originators and that, that originality goes a long way 
Yeah, that's well. Uh, it's also very important that there's newer bands coming out that are carrying a flag for death metal, even if it's not, say, the most original or whatever. It's still great that they're, um, you know, look you're looking back on a, on the bands like us, autopsy, immolation, suffocation, whoever you want to say, and trying to bring it into a more modern thing. I mean, that's the way music's supposed to be anyway for the younger generation. So I think that's still a good. Um, you know, a good thing that's happening. At least I see that a lot in the in the death metal world, which I think is, is helping make things better for everybody. It makes it brings a lot more younger people I know to watch bands like Autopsy and Us because you know maybe the younger kids wouldn't know us if there wasn't these younger bands that were you know influenced by us doing it. Which and also for me, it's like a super honor to even think that anything I did influenced anybody because you know you, you never thought about that back then and the fact that you do is yeah the honor is just i mean that's like probably the coolest thing about being in a band besides you know coming up with the music and playing or whatever is just to know that your music inspired somebody else to do something of their own it's super awesome and i think it, band like all it, top tier us definitely um you know i definitely see that it's obvious i think in the in especially the death metal world I'm glad there's younger bands too, because someday we're all gonna drop dead. And then someone's gotta someone's gotta keep the stuff. Someone's gotta going, keep it know? going, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yes. I mean for real. Yeah. Exactly. So speaking of keeping it going, so maybe you guys can kind of take us out here and give us a little glimpse into the crystal ball of what's in store for both of your bands uh here in the beginning of this brand new year. Chris. Uh a couple we got a, a few shows coming up and a few more we're gonna add in and we're uh talking about doing some some new stuff making a new album we're not going to be in as much of a hurry as the last two albums those were a little stressful because we did this thing where we booked studio time before we had all the material written we're just like oh we'll, we'll, we'll be fine we'll make it work yeah yeah we'll make it work and we did but it was like a lot of like looking at the the time and the calendar going oh shit you know, and we after that we did that once. We're like, let's not do that again. And then we did it again on the, the last <laughs> album. But the, maybe it provided a sense of urgency in the listening or something. I don't know. But um, we're gonna we're gonna take take uh, our time a little bit more on the new one. But we're definitely gonna do a new one. We're starting to like you know marinate some ideas and stuff like that and try and make it the best one yet. Cool. <laughs> well, we can hope for. Well, so, yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes the music, you know, sometimes it helps as a musician to have that deadline, though, and saying like, oh, shit, you got to get done before, you know, the studio's coming up quick. Let's just, uh, you know, break out some ideas. And I don't know, we've done that in the past. And it actually worked out pretty cool, I thought. Yeah, well, if we didn't have deadlines, we wouldn't get anything done ever. <laughs> yeah, it's I'm, too easy you know, to get complacent. Oh, man. Yeah, we, we just, I don't know, the days have a way of just slipping away. We're like, oh, shit, how did six months go by? <laughs> So yeah, <laughs> deadlines, deadlines are good. They kind of make our world go around, you know? <laughs> so John, what's your year looking like? Um, I'm surprised touring. surprise will be touring. Um, we have um, a, a tour in Europe. Um, it's decapitated us, uh, Nervosa. We're playing like kind of like the, um, what's it like? The Balkan type areas in Spain, like kind of like Southern um, Europe. And then, um, we, then we do a UK run, which I'm pretty psyched about because I found, finally get to play um, Ireland again, which has been uh, probably about 10, 15 years since we played there. So that'll be really cool to play Dublin again. And oh. we're, doing, we're doing the Milwaukee Metal Fest um, in May. So that should be a blast. And we have a bunch of fests in Europe. We're doing like Vakken and um, Party Sun, um, Brutal Assault, a bunch of really fun fest there and then at the end of um august we have um we're doing some dates while, while we're over in europe we're going to hook up with left to die and do um you know about a week week and a half worth of shows with them which would be a lot of fun too so nice. it's definitely keeping busy and you know we're, we're trying to work on some material we have some material that we started over the pandemic that we haven't been able to finish because i've been freaking touring so damn much um so you know, hopefully after that, I take a little bit of time and just uh, get back into kind of writing mode and stuff. I get kind of the itch to write after a while. It's been quite a while since you wrote any new songs. Cool. Lots going on for both of you. That's good. Excellent. 
Yeah, keep us alive. I saw some video of you recently. You played uh, with Left to Die, but you, you did the song Evil Dead's up on YouTube. I didn't know if you just got up for one song or did you actually play like a whole set with them? Um, I did Infernal Death and um, Evil Dead with, with them. I just seen the one song and I remember thinking this is the only time I've ever seen video of you actually drumming to them song, to that song. Anyway. Uh, funny enough, the year before I uh, did uh, Evil Dead with Incantation yes yeah that was that was super cool <laughs> that was actually a lot of fun i was relieved that i didn't destroy the song and embarrass myself and them and everyone else in the room so then uh yeah evil or um left to die uh rick asked me if i would play a couple songs with them and um i said yeah i can do evil dead because i just did that with with incantation i'd still kind of remember how that one goes he, he mentioned zombie ritual I'm like i don't know that's got probably a few more parts than I'm comfortable with on such short notice. There's a lot of, a lot of uh, chances to ruin that one. So, <laughs> so you mentioned uh, infernal death. I'm like, Oh yeah, I could do that one. That's easy enough. Uh, super fun. It was, it was actually a really good time. I enjoyed it a lot more than I, not that I didn't think it would be fun, but I really got kind of a high off of playing those songs with those guys. It was, it was, it was, it was a really good time. I liked it a lot. Yeah, I have to say, doing um, playing Evil Dead with Chris, that was um, in early 22 when we did that in uh, Berkeley. And um, it was really, really fun to play with uh, Chris. Um, you, you just you have this personality to your playing that it just went playing the song, even though, you know, we were playing it every once in a while on tour as like an encore song. But once Chris got on it, it just kind of like everything kind of came together and it just sounded more, you know, more like the album. Like, I mean, obviously you're a drummer on there, but there's like a personality in your playing, which I think is very, very unique because somebody else could play the same exact thing and probably just as good, but not with that, not with that finesse. I don't know what the right word is, but I know for myself, it was a highlight of, you know, for me, you know, my musical career to be able to, uh, you know, play a song with you. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. I was I was honored and stoked to get the invitation, man. That was super fun. Yeah, thank you. That was great. I, I loved every second of it. I was yeah, my I, first thought when we were done. I was like, let's do it again. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like when you're a little kid, you do something fun. Let's do it again. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of like fun. And great. this is a great example of musicians who who still have fun doing what they're doing on stage, and that's what it's all about, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Otherwise, there's no no point. You can go up there and be miserable and. <laughs> maybe get paid or something like that and you yeah. just don't like it there's no there's no no purpose for it and to all the bands watching who play the same set list over and over and over again show after show tour after tour this is the way it's supposed to be done bring up some guest stars have fun pay homage to the great songs of yesteryear and just enjoy yourself that's what it's all about let it rip i agree yeah it's not gonna have fun it's like i don't want to get on stage on i know that i mean after you've seen a bunch of shows like we all have you, you could tell when a band's like, I want to say phoning it in, but you could tell when a band's up there having like a fucking oh, blast. Yeah. And uh, yeah. yeah, like I know like me and Nick, every time Iron Maiden tour, we go see Iron Maiden religiously and like they're just having a fucking blast up there, you know? Oh, yeah. You got to run around. I just like spend you guys too. I haven't seen you guys since, like I said, Maryland Death Fest like two years ago. But every time I've seen you, I think I've seen you about 10 times since you reformed and to then. Oh, shit. You guys always, you just look like you're having like a fucking great time up there. You just kill it. Just, just the energy just, it pours into the crowd. You can definitely feel it. Like it's, it's like almost like a perceptible thing, you know? Oh, like thanks, man. Yeah. It's, it's, it's genuine. We're not pretending, you know? Oh, it's, well, it's, it's, it's appreciated because like bands, some bands like kind of stand there like a little wooden. I, I, you know, I don't know what's inside their heads, but when a band's like, you just have that energy flowing off you, you can, the crowd can feel it. And uh, yeah, it just, it makes a good show to me even better. Well, right yeah, on. Well, yeah. the, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, I was just gonna say we don't have like a, a a front person. So the the other three guys up front, they have to work extra hard to make it entertaining to watch. So they gotta like run around and crash into each other and stuff because we don't have a Bruce Dickinson or whatever, <laughs> someone to like hype up a D Snyder or someone to like hype up the crowd. So those three guys have to work like extra hard to you know mm -hmm. make it make it interesting. So I you know my hats off to them. I'm yeah, just sitting and, right and, back. and to play, um, you know, as a fan of music, you go to a show, you want to, you know, you want to see the bands enjoying it. You want to get that 
you know, positive vibe from the band playing, regardless of what it is that you're, you're going to see musically. And that's just the same thing that, you know, when we play live, we want to just enjoy it, enjoy that time and give people that same experience that, you know, we want to enjoy. Plus it's just fun for us. I mean, when you have a dream from being, you know, a kid, you know, listening to your kiss albums, thinking one day you want to play music and stuff, you get that opportunity to do it. You want to appreciate that. You know, you every oh, yeah. day you get to go on stage and play is a good day. It's a day that you're fulfilling the dream that you had as a child. I mean, it's just the reality of it. You know, I never I never forget that, um, you know, and, and if I ever lose that, I'll know it's the time. OK, let's not do this anymore. If I have to get on stage and be like grumpy about it or bummed out that I have to do it, then it's like, OK, it's you know, that's why I tour so much because I love it so much. I guess. <laughs> that's oh man, that, you nailed it, John. That was awesome. Uh, thank you. Yeah, that's so perfect. Please go out and support these guys out on tour, right? If you get a chance to see Autopsy and Incantation, go check them out. Support their music as well. It's all readily available. Check out their two most recent albums and hopefully some new music to come. And I want to thank both of you really for coming on, Chris, for the first time. It's wonderful having you on here, and John. Oh, thank you so much. Seeing you on here again, and I'm sure thank we you. will be seeing the last of both of you on SOT. So uh, thanks. Right again. on. I just want hey, to say one you. more thing, Pete. I uh, I was told my friend from uh, London, and I was doing this earlier today, and he's like, his uh, his band's Necromaniac, and they're up and coming, but he's like, oh, we just recorded a promo for our album, and he's like, I put a little nod to Autopsy on the promo tape, and I haven't seen you, they just did it like last week, and I'm like, really? So he sends me a picture of it, and it's a little anti, like a little old school anti-piracy warning, and it says, let's see it. This demo is intended for private promotional use only. If you sell it or spread it without the band's permission, May your spirit be ridden with disease and cursed in eternity. <laughs> we, did, we did a little shout out to you and to Mayhem with Cursed in Eternity. It's yeah, like nice. ah, fucking cool. He's like, you gotta show Chris. I'm like, ah, I will. So yeah, there's oh yeah. Yeah, there's tell the, him, the uh tell him big thumbs up for me. Oh fuck yeah, yeah. he'll be happy. To to say too. He'll be I happy to hear that. Yeah. To too. It's They're fucking a good cool. Yeah, a little blur really right good. on the uh you know, right on the cassette there, but yeah. Yeah. So, yeah I'll, 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 when you guys play Houston, I'll definitely come up and say hello. Please do. Yeah, please do. We'll have a beer or something. Okay, man. I got one, uh, Ralph's got one last thing before we go. What do you got, Ralph? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, if I had to make a list of my top five death metal albums, um, Chris is the only one that played on two of them. Oh, and man. I got, I got this uh, tattoo. I don't know if you can see it good. In there. Oh, oh, yeah. There oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, man, that's sick. You know that doesn't come off, right? <laughs> 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 uh, it, it's been an absolute honor to be on an episode with you chris you're a legend oh man Love you. thank you thank you so much man I, it was so cool talking to you guys it's been a blast okay yeah. it's yeah. great to see all you guys absolutely yeah, yeah. yeah. best of luck to absolutely. both of you and for everybody you. watching visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org we're on facebook we're on youtube all together all the damn, all the damn time, time. For the great chris reiser the great john mcintee the great nick franco the great ryan scow and the great Mr. Count Ralphus himself. I am P. Pardo. Thanks for watching, everybody. Stay tuned for more stuff here on SOT. Till then, have a good night, everybody. Thanks for watching. Take care. Right on. Thank you so much.